Shalom. Giving all praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations unto the elect. And I wanted to deal with a question I was asked on a point I made um, in one of the previous videos dealing with, you know, America, you know, meaning bitter. All right. And also here in this letter that Jeremiah wrote to the captives at Babylon here in Jeremiah, the 50th chapter, which we know. This Babylon that uh, Jeremiah is speaking of. OK, is not speaking of ancient Babylon. All right. But when you read the letter, what we're going to find out is that it's actually speaking of the destruction that's coming to this Babylon. And we are those captives at Babylon to whom this letter would be read by in the latter days for comfort. All right. Now, when you go into this chapter. All right. And we'll get into it. Jeremiah 50 and 21, it says, go up against the land of Marathiam. All right. And uh, what I brought out, which we'll get into it. Um, the word Marathiam, okay, double rebellion, and it's another name for Babylon, okay, but when you go to the root word, okay, Mara, all right, within the name America, all right, it's rooted in this very word, and what does that mean? Bitterness. So for years, the apostles you know, in specific, Apostle Gabar would speak on how America meant bitter. All right. And um, I remember one day the spirit jumped on me to go through it and I did a lesson on it. But the spirit has jumped on me to go through it again um, and add some points to it. Now, when you read Jeremiah, the 51st chapter, the 50th chapter and some of the 49th chapter. OK, this is a letter. OK, as you can read here in Jeremiah, the 51st chapter, this is a letter. That Jeremiah sent. OK, right here, Jeremiah 51 and 59. As a matter of fact, just start here at 58, it says, thus saith Yahweh of hosts, the broad walls of Babylon shall be utterly broken. And her high gates shall be burned with fire. And the people shall labor in vain in the folk in the very fire and they shall be weary. Now, when you look at how ancient Babylon was taken down. OK, there were some skirmishes, but pretty much when you read Daniel, the fifth chapter. OK, pretty much that Neo Babylonian Empire was what Daniel five and twenty eight as they were partying. There came a hand writing. All right. On the wall as they were partying and the only one who could break it down was Daniel. And as he broke it down, he pretty much told him, you know, you, the, 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 the most high have numbered your kingdom and finished it. You are weighed in the balances. Thy kingdom is divided and give it into the Medes and Persians. OK. And um, that's what happened. OK. Darius the Mede took the kingdom, all right, and pretty much the, it was divided, all right, there was no fire involved, there was some skirmishes where people died, all right, but that's pretty much it, okay, when you look into how ancient, all right, the ancient Neo-Babylonian Empire fell, because you have Babal that goes back to Nimrod, then you have the Neo-Babylonian Empire ran by the Assyrians, and then you have Babylon the Great, all right, which is the final captivity for the Israelites. And it will be subject to the damnest of uh, judgments by fire. So when you read this, what we're going to find out is that Jeremiah is actually describing the very captivity we're in here in Babylon, the great. All right. The land of the north. Here over here in the northwestern hemisphere. All right. The 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 uh, the bulk of the uh, Israelites will be here. And this is where the bulk of the prophets will be raised up. So prophecy is centered around the West. That's why the scriptures say 
so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the West. Now, you do have brothers in captivity scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, but the Bible addresses that as well, and we'll get that. So when you read these letters, Jeremiah 50, 51, some of 49, I believe, as well, all right, when you look at it, let's read what Jeremiah did with those letters, all right? It says, the word which Jeremiah the prophet commanded Sariah, the son of Neriah, the son of Masiah, when he went to Zedekiah, the, uh, the king of Judah, and to Babylon, and to the fourth year of his reign, and this Sariah was a quiet prince. Okay, so as um, Zedekiah was going to pay tribute to uh, Nebuchadnezzar, Jeremiah wrote these series of letters, most likely uh, Baruch scribed them for him, and he told, okay, Sariah, okay, to take this particular, these, these series of letters and, and read them to the captives at Babylon. All right, now when you keep reading, it says, so Jeremiah wrote in a book all the evil that should come upon Babylon, even all these words that are written against Babylon. Okay. And this Babylon is directly tied to Revelation, the 18th chapter. This was a prophecy. And Jeremiah said to Sarai, when thou comest to Babylon and shall see, thou shall read all these words. Okay. Then shall thy say, O Yahweh, thou hast spoken against this place to cut it off, that none shall remain in it, neither man nor beast, but that it shall be desolate forever now. We know that the region where the Neo-Babylonian Empire was ran is what? Iraq. Okay, are people still dwelling in Iraq? Absolutely. So this had to be a future prophecy right there. Okay, and Sariah has to be here as well, reading these words somewhere. Okay, now I have the history on it. I got it off of a uh, website uh, dealing with the uh, Bible, but it says here, Sariah ben Neriah, all right? And it says, the son of Neriah, and ben means son. It's actually ban, all right? So the son of Neriah, when Zedekiah made a journey to Babylon to do homage to Nebuchadnezzar, because remember, we were captive. We were to be there 70 years, but the Lord cut it short. Sariah had charge of the royal gifts to be presented on that occasion. Jeremiah took advantage of the occasion and sent with Sariah a word of cheer to the exiles in Babylon. All right. Now, there were literally exiles there at Babylon. But in spirit, this is speaking of us. And we'll show you, it says, in an announcement of the doom in store for that guilty city. Now, of course, these particular scholars don't have the spirit because when did that happen to the neo-babylonian empire when were they burned by fire as a matter of fact we'll show you esau is even linked to that babylon okay it says it says an announcement of the doom in store for that guilty city it says the scroll containing this message Jeremiah 51 through 8, okay? Sariah was to read to the exiles and then after fixing a stone to it was to throw it into the Euphrates uttering as, a, as it sank the prayer recorded in Jeremiah 51, 59 through 64, which we'll get that. Babylon was at this time at the height of its glory, <laughs> the greatest and most powerful monarchy in the world. Now he's going to keep going. It says scarcely 70 years elapsed when the words of the prophet were all fulfilled. Now, whoever wrote this really don't know what the hell they're talking about. Because as we're going to read to you, this particular Babylon that fell, we just read in Daniel, the fifth chapter, how that fell. So that, that wasn't fulfilled here. OK, at this time, it says Jeremiah 51 in 59 is rendered in the revised version. Now Sariah was chief chamberlain instead of was a quiet prince. 
as in the authorized version. So that's that. Now let's go here real quick because these Edomites, they be writing these things and they be trying to escape judgment. But when you go to Jeremiah 49, just to get to the point, see, he, he, he gets on Edom, right? <laughs> As a matter of fact, woo. Starting at 10, I have made Esau bare. I have uncovered his secret places. He shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, his brethren, and it keeps going. Verse 12, for those who judgment, saith the Lord, behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup has surely drunken. And art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? Thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of it. When did that happen to Esau? Okay, let's keep going. For I have sworn by myself, saith the Lord, that Basra shall become a desolation, a reproach, and a waste, and a curse, and all the cities thereof shall be perpetual waste. And this that never happened to Basra. So this is in, in spirit speaking of the same thing that's talked about in the 51st chapter, but you have to have the spirit to see now. I'm going to just go to the point. Jeremiah 49 and 17, also Edom shall be a desolation. Everyone that goeth by it shall be astonished and shall hiss at the plagues thereof. As in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah in the uh, neighboring cities thereof, saith Yahweh, no man shall abide there, neither shall a son of man dwell therein. So right here you see Edom is linked to the judgment that's coming to this modern day Babylon. Also, always, we get Psalms 137. Okay, we always get this, Psalms 137 and 7. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem who said, race it, race it. And that was in that Neo-Babylonian captivity, even to the foundation of thereof. O daughter of Babylon, who ought to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. So we're going to get Esau back, but it's going to be through him ruling Babylon the great, the daughter of Babylon. You see that? So going back to the point in Jeremiah, the 51st chapter, in the 60th verse. So Jeremiah wrote in a book all the evil that shall come upon Babylon, even all these words that are written against Babylon. And Jeremiah said to Sariah, when thou comest into Babylon, which he did go back then, all right, but we know that which is then is now. Sariah would have to be here today and shall see and shall read all these words. Then shall thou say, O Yahweh, thou hast spoken against this place to cut it off, that none shall remain in it, neither shall man or beast, but it shall be desolate forever. And it shall be when thou hast made an end of reading this book, that thou shalt bind a stone to it and cast it into the midst of the Euphrates. And thou shalt say, Thus shall Babylon sink, and shall not rise from the evil that I will bring upon her, and they all shall be wary. Thus are the words of Jeremiah. So Jeremiah gave these series of letters to Sariah. Okay? To Sariah. Let's look at what that means. Sariah. Yahweh is ruler. Okay? Son of Moriah, a messenger sent to the uh, by the prophet Jeremiah to Babylon with a book of his writings. All right, so to to put everything and link it all together. All right, I mean we can start at one and read down and jump to the point. Okay, Jeremiah fifty and one, the word that Yahweh spake against Babylon and against the land of the Chaldeans by the Jeremiah the prophet. Now we know Isaiah the 47th chapter, okay, sit down in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon, and it also calls it the daughter of the Chaldeans. All right, so that's speaking of Babylon the Great, which who runs Babylon the Great? Not Japheth, it's Esau. Esau is the end of the world, man. So this letter was literally written to you here, letting you know how your final captivity will go out. 
right? Declare ye among the nations and publish and set up a standard. Publish and conceal not. Say Babylon is taken. Baal is confounded. But all, all of these gods are back here today. Merodach is broken in pieces. Her idols are confounded. Her images are broken in pieces. And that was the chief deity worshipped in uh, ancient Babylon. All right. Along with a bunch of other ones, man. But Maraduk was kind of like the top god amongst all of, you know, 300 and something gods. OK, and all of that stuff is back here today, man. His daughter, actually, Maradoc's daughter was actually uh, known as one who would torture children in their dreams. And if you look at a lot of Esau's movies, that spirit is projected, man. So all of that stuff goes back to ba Freddy Krueger. All of these things go back to Babylon, man. OK, for out of the north, they're coming up a nation against her. All right. The northeastern hemisphere, Russia, which shall make her land desolate and none shall dwell therein. They shall remove. They shall depart both man and beast. All right. In those days and in that time, you know, before Russia does that, saith the Lord, the children of Israel shall come. They and the children of Judah together, all 12 tribes going and weeping. They shall go and seek the Lord their God. Are not we doing that? This is speaking of the remnant. OK. In specific here in Babylon, but scattered throughout the four corners of the earth as well. They shall ask the way to Zion with their faces thitherward. Saying, come, let us join ourselves unto Yahweh in a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. All right. Is that not what we're doing? OK, we're turning back to our Lord. We're bringing we're, we're constantly talking about the covenant, the new covenant, the mercies of David. We're repenting. So all of this is happening right now. And Jeremiah foretold it. Russia is, 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 is going in. It talks of then it goes into how my people have been a lost sheep. So. When you read this, you know, Jeremiah 50 and 8, remove out of the midst of Babylon and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans. All right. Verse 9, for I will raise up and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations. Did that happen to the Neo-Babylonian Empire? No. From the north country. Now we read Ezekiel 38 and these particular nations are all going to join together as well as the uh, EU and NATO countries, and they can shoot missiles on America. All right? World War III is going to be going on as well, and that's going to be the time of our deliverance. Okay? It says that in Revelation, the 11th chapter, all right? Uh, the, the, the great voice said, come up hither, and a great earthquake destroyed Babylon the Great, where we were held captive, man, in a dead state, but woke up. OK, it says, and they shall set themselves array against her from thence shall she be taken. Her arrow shall be as of the mighty expert man. None shall return in, in vain. And this is speaking of missiles. See, that didn't happen to the Neo-Babylonian Empire and the Chaldeans at that time. They were taken down and their land was parted amongst the, the Medes and the Persians. OK. Now it says. OK. Because you were glad, because you were rejoice, O you destroyers of mine heritage, because you are grown as fat as the heifer at grass and the bellows at bull. So this is speaking of Esau. As a matter of fact, Isaiah, the 47th chapter. Okay, the virgin daughter of Babylon. That's what this, the same thing. Isaiah 47 and 6, I was wroth with my people, have polluted mine inheritance, and given them into thine hand. Thou didst show them no mercy upon the ancient, as thou verily laid thy yoke. And thou says, I shall be a lady forever. You've got rich. All right. You've been able to go throughout the planet Earth with no judgment, wiping your mouth as if you didn't do anything, like a harlot, a whore. So that thou didst not lay these things to thine heart, neither didst thou remember the latter end of it. OK. <laughs> so. You didn't think about the latter end of your actions. OK, you grew as fat as the bellows, you know, you, you, you grew, you wax fat. Now, as you keep reading, just get to the point. To tie it all together. Ooh. 
Verse 20, in those days and at that time, said the Lord, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought for, and there shall be none in the sins of Judah, and they shall not be found, for I will pardon them and will pres and, and whom I reserve. And we're going to be delivered. Now, here's the point. Go up against the land of Marathiam, even against it, and against the inhabitants of Picot. Waste and utterly destroy after them, said the Lord, and do according to all that I have commanded thee. So when you get this word, as I showed you, it's just a code name for Babylon. Picard as well is a code name for Babylon, but we're going to focus on Marathiam because within Marathiam is the, is the word Mar, which goes back to what? <laughs> Amarica. That's what we're getting ready to show you. Okay, Marathiam. And there's so many other points in that Jeremiah 50 and 51, but I'm going to stick to the point. Now, Marathiam, as we showed you, it means double rebellion. Okay? Just like Miriam means rebellion. As a matter of fact, let me show you that. Or bitterness. Okay, Miriam, Marayam, rebellion, okay, rebellion, all right, so like if you know somebody named Maria, <laughs> that means re re bitterness or rebellion, man, <laughs> Mar, Maria, okay, and that's, that, that root is in America, which goes back to Amerigo Vespucci, now, Marathiam, double rebellion, another name for Babylon. When you go to the root here, okay, Mara, Mar, bitterness, and of harlot's end, of end of wickedness. And we know, according to the Holy Scriptures, the harlot in Revelation, the 17th chapter, that sitteth upon many waters. The mother of all harlots is Babylon the Great. So all of this ties in together. End of wickedness. Esau is the end of the world. Now, I'm going to just go through this real quick. How did America get its name? Today, America celebrates its independence. Our founding fathers drafted the adopted Declaration of Independence, declaring America's freedom from Great Britain and setting in motion universal human rights. Yeah, okay. While the colonies may have established it, America was given a name long before. America is named after Amerigo Vespucci. See, the Lord had it all planned out. <laughs> and Jeremiah prophesied of this. Okay, the Italian explorer who set forth, all right, the then revolutionary concept that the lands that Christopher Columbus sailed to in 1492, all right, were a part of a separate continent. Okay? It says, a map created in 1507 was the first to depict this new continent with the name America, a Latinized version of Amerigo. Amerigo. All right? So these devils were going throughout particular lands, Rape, robbing, and murdering. You had the doctrine of discovery. Christians, right? Christian Edomites, okay, coming in the name of Jesus, you know, stealing, rape, robbing, and murder. Murdering, man. John Calvin knows a thing or two about that, vocab Malone. And this goes into prophecy. Psalms 49 and 11, their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever in their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. See that? They go throughout the four. Even the elements are named after them. The planets are named after their gods. Okay? Leo Sipius Africanus. They, they, they took these lands and pretty much put their names on them as the scriptures say. Okay? <laughs> they call their land after their own names. And that's what they did with America. Now, 
it's in the it, the the Italian root. Okay, I just typed it in here. English is bitter. Amaro. Okay, in the Italian is how you would say that. All right, you go to the Spanish. Bitter. Amargo. Okay, amargo. Bitter. What do you see in there? Mar. Okay. Amargo. Okay. And also when you go into the scriptures and you look up myrrh, myrrh means bitter. As a matter of fact, myrrh, we know it as a, you know, the resin that comes from the trees, but I'm just jump to the point. From the Greek, myrrh, mir from a Semitic source compared Akanian, Maru, Hebrew, mar. Arabic, mer, mer, from the root meaning was bitter. And has not America been a bitter experience for us? Even the term nightmare, it is, it is rooted in this mare, okay? Nightmare, mare, slang for a very unpleasant and frustrating experience. Okay, now when you get Daniel the seventh chapter, It told you about what that horn would do. Daniel 7 and 25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and dividing of times. But the judgment shall sit and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it until the end. And that's the end of our captivity. Our captivity ends, all right, through the fall of Babylon the Great, this bitter this nightmare and what's next okay the kingdom and the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominion shall serve and obey him you see that so that's when a nightmare is over all right remember we just read it nightmare okay Give me one second here. A very pleasant or frustrating experience. Shortened form of nightmare. Okay? And that's what this is. That's why it says here in Psalms 126 and 1, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dreamed. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the heathen, the Lord have done great things. All right. Now. This is Job 10 and 1. My soul. Now, Job represents the nation of Israel. My soul is weary of my life. I will leave my complaint upon myself. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. And we have a very, this is a very bitter, you know, especially once you know and understand the truth, it becomes very bitter. OK, as the scriptures say, when you when you ingest this word, it's sweet in your mouth. But when you when you taste this word, it's sweet. But when you digest it, it becomes bitter in your belly. Because it's like, damn, we went off. Damn, these heathen ruling over us. Damn, it ain't supposed to be that way. You start to judge things and look, look at things differently. But even what we went through before we woke up as a nation was bitter. See, and that word bitterness That word bitterness is what? Martyr. Okay, so when you look at the word, um, the, the, the root word of amartica or amartigo, okay, or amaro, it's all that mar is there. So when Jeremiah, okay, was writing, and this is the land of darkness, man. As a matter of fact, Real quick, going back in this very chapter in the book of Job. Let's see here. Going to the end of the chapter. It says, verse 21, Job 10, Before I go and whence, I shall not return even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death. That's here in America. 
a land of darkness as darkness itself and of the shadow of death without any order where the light is as darkness. This is a bitter experience for us, especially if you're spiritual. All right. If you in the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahshua, this is a bitter experience. Why? Because it's no order. It, 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 I mean, as Jeremiah described it. The land of Marathayim, the land of double rebellion. OK. Which Nimrod's name was re meant rebellion and he found it Babel. All right. Confusion. OK. Then you had the Neo Babylonian Empire. And then you have double rebellion through Babylon the Great. See? And Mar is in it. Double rebellion. All right? Bitterness. Of an harlot's end. The end of wickedness. And when you get Revelation, the 17th chapter. <laughs> what is it? The doom of Babylon. Okay? And when you go to what it means, uh, what, what, what dealing with this, 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 this great Babylon, what does it say? And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman, which is Babylon the great, drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Yahweh. It was bitter. Okay, going back to Rome and the revival of Rome. This is the revival of ancient Rome. And when I saw her, I looked and wondered with great admiration because she comes off as this wholesome, you know, but when you, when you really go into what she is, she's a harlot, the mother of all abominations on the earth, man. So of a harlot's in the end of wickedness, Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is, is the beginning of it that followeth, man. And in our captivity, in various different nations, it was known as bitter. How much more this one? Lamentations 1 and 4. Now, this is when the Neo-Babylonian Empire rolled on us and took down the temple. We, it was a famine. Sent us judgment. Verse 4 says, the ways of Zion do more because none come to the solemn feast. All her gates are desolate. Her priests sigh. All her virgins are afflicted and she is in bitterness. See? So bitterness is tied to captivity, man. <laughs> you see? And this is the final captivity, man. And the Lord just, ha just so happened to name it America. See that? The Lord just so happened to name this place Amarica, which goes back to Amar or Amargo, which ultimately is bitter. So, yes, America does mean bitter. And what makes it even more interesting is what <laughs> the Lord put the spirit on Jeremiah. OK, to, to you know, hey, as he came, you know, what did he say? As these nations that go up against the land of Marathayim, even against it, against the inhabitants of Picard, which, you know, that's another name for it, too. All right. To keep, you know, to, to make stumbling blocks because people, you know, the Lord, the Lord works like that, man. Hold up. Picard means what? Pakadawad, a visitation. And this place is going to be visited. OK, a people in the Babylonian army, a tribe in the southeast Babylonian and bordering Elam. Hmm. It says here a symbolic name for Babylon. So their army is going to be visited, man. Hmm. Numbered. <laughs> hey, their kingdom has been numbered, man. So, there you go. You know, Amerigo Vespucci, the, hey, the Lord, hey, man's goings are the Lord. 
But really, the Lord, you know, wanted him to come conquer, you know, him and them damn demons to come take over this land because it was written. Because that's what they do, right? What's that in Micah? Micah, the second chapter. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hands. And they covet fields and take them by violence and houses and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. Okay? So they lie to you. They take your land. They remove the landmarks, which is against the law. You know, they oppress you, then they oppress who you really are and feed you what? Pseudoscience. So this is a this place is bitter unto all nations, man. So when you when you read these letters in Jeremiah, you know, 49, 50, 51. All right, this is speaking to you. Okay? A sound of battle is in the land. Okay, <laughs> and of great destruction. We're hearing of those wars and rumors of wars because it's getting ready to lead to Marathiam getting destroyed, Amaraka being destroyed, this bitter captivity being destroyed. How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? How has Babylon become a desolation among the nations? This is what's coming. These nations are getting ready to come up against you. Call the archers against Babylon. Marathiam and all that bend the bow. Double Babylon. Because double, Babylon means what? Uh, uh, confusion. This is double confusion. They took everything further. Double rebellion, man. So you would have to read the rest on your own. Hey, Jer Jeremiah 50 and 46. At the noise of the taking of Babylon, the earth is moved and a cry is heard among the nations. Which takes you right here. That didn't happen at the time of the Neo Babylonian Empire. That have that's happened. This is described in Revelation the eighteenth chapter. Revelation eighteen and nine, and the kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. All right, standing afar off. For the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city. For in one hour is thy judgment come. And we are citizens of this big, gigantic city that's divided into uh, uh, ten parts by what? Uh, 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 the zip code starting at zero all the way to nine. The ten FEMA regions. This place is going to be destroyed, man. And when it is destroyed, this is that laughter that's going to be in our heart after that nightmare. So it said we're gonna, we were like them that dreamed. When the Lord brought us about of this place. So what are we going to do? Verse 20. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets. For God have avenged you on her. Showing you the apostles and prophets would be in Babylon. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and it shall be found no more at all. All right. <laughs> Just like. Sariah was told in Jeremiah 51. All right, after he finished reading those words. Jeremiah 51 and 63, and it shall be when thou hast made an end of reading this book, that thou shalt bind a stone to it and cast it into the midst of the Euphrates. So, hey, Sariah may be in great millstone. <laughs> Hey, looking at it in spirit, wherever he is, he's definitely going in. He's bringing the, 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 the end of, he's prophesying the end of Babylon, man. So I just wanted to bring that out. I mean, there was more. Here's the other video I did on it. You know, uh, America, oh, I have it on private. But, uh, you know, I, I'll make it, uh available i just put the link in there because you know i went into probably some more on that one so that's it you know i just let you know here america is a latinized version of amerigo okay and 
in the Spanish is amargo, all right, which means bitter. Let's go to Latin. Boom, and when you go to the Latin, <laughs> bitter, amara, amara. See that? So America, it, 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 on down the line, it became Amar America, but that's what its root, you know, goes back to, man. So this is that bitter captivity, you know, the, the, and, and we're at the end of it, man. Shalom.